What's happening, everyone? Welcome to episode 209 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder here at Whistlekick. And on today's episode, we're going to talk about how the world sees us as martial artists. And this is actually a listener submission topic. And I'll read their question shortly, but wanted to let you know what you're in store for. If you're new to the show, you can check us out at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can find all of the products that we make at whistlekick.com. That's also a great hub for all the other things that we do, like our calendar and our meme site and our brand ambassadors. I mean, just there, there's so much going on here. And I try not to take up too much time in the podcast letting everybody know about all the stuff that we've got going on because, well... The introductions would be really long, and I don't want to do long introductions. I want to get you into the heart of what you're here to listen to, the stuff that I'm here to talk about, because I like talking about it, hopefully, as much as you like listening to it. So like I said, we had somebody write in with a suggestion for a topic. I'm going to paraphrase some of what they've written in, and I'm not going to read their name because I didn't ask their permission first. So here we go. I have a topic for one of your Thursday shows. This question came up in Jesse Einkamp's Karate Nerds Facebook group, which I learned about from the Whistlekick podcast. Well, thanks. Um, really loved having Sensei Einkamp on the show. What a great, what a good guy. What, what good stuff he's doing for the martial arts, seriously. And the question was, would you include martial arts on your resume for a job outside of the martial arts? And he goes on to say that the question, you know, led to a lot of kind of controversy, people having some really hard opinions. And he mentions that personally he had a college professor who was a Taekwondo practitioner. And he said, you should never put your hobbies on a resume. And his logic was, that if you're in the martial arts, you know what martial arts means. But if you, you know, if, if you're talking to somebody, if somebody looking through your resume is not a martial artist, they're not going to know what it means. And that the average person just thinks martial arts is, is MMA and people get angry and things like that. So that was their question that they're posing, and they wrote it in, and yeah, I've got some thoughts. I've got some some different thoughts and what they outlined there. Let's talk about it. Before we talk about how the world sees us, how do we see ourselves? Because I think that might even be more important. And I think as martial artists, we tend to see ourselves pretty well. I think there's a bit more ego than there needs to be on our own personal opinions, and I'm not talking about myself specifically, or you, the listener specifically, or any individual people. I just mean overall. When martial artists look at martial artists, we tend to have a bit of ego. We associate with each other. You know, we live in this bubble, and that's not bad. That's not wrong. But I think we often forget that there are a lot of good people outside of martial arts. Now, you've heard me talk on this show before unless you're a new listener, you've probably heard me talk on this show before that I feel martial artists are overall better people. You know, my belief that everyone should do at least six months of martial arts training because it leads to such good things. And that can be a bit myopic. And that's not necessarily fair to people outside of the martial arts. We get tunnel vision. So if we can step outside of that tunnel, if we can look at ourselves honestly, most of us are really good people. And actually, that's how I think the rest of the world sees us. Some folks might see us as violent. I'm sure a lot of them see us as weird, because let's face it, what we do is pretty weird. But overall, I think people see us as stable and reliable and being good people, having a positive influence on others and the world around them. If that wasn't the case, then we wouldn't see so many parents bringing their children to martial arts training. I think that right there says a lot about the way the world sees us. Of course, there are differences between traditional martial arts and mixed martial arts. And from talking to my friends that don't train, you know, sometimes I'll, I'll hang out with them and we'll watch a UFC match or something. They seem to see mixed martial arts as this kind of subset of overall martial arts. And I guess it can be. You know, we've, we've kind of beaten that subject back and forth a bit on this show, and I don't want to go into that. But I believe, as it relates to this question, as this topic, most people recognize that there is some kind of division between the traditional martial arts, non-martial artists think about, which are karate, taekwondo, and kung fu. If you ask most people to name martial arts, that's what they're going to say. I think they see that line between those 
three arts and MMA. And that's okay. However they draw the line, they recognize that there's a line. And I think that when someone, say like a, a Conor McGregor, goes on TV and says some things that are kind of nasty, maybe you shouldn't say, I don't think that hurts our reputation as a, a Taekwondo practitioner or a karateka, right? So I think we're, we've got some insulation there. And that itself says something about us and the way the world sees us. I think we as martial artists tend to see more of the individual differences. And sometimes we create differences within different arts or different associations. Oh, those WTF Taekwondo people, you know, they don't know how to block. <laughs> right? So that's not a judgment of their them as individuals, but sometimes that's a judgment of the style. And sometimes, and I'm not even going to to name stuff that I've heard because I don't I don't want to frustrate or or hurt anyone's feelings, but sometimes those judgments move from style generalizations to the individuals practicing those styles. All karate people are blank. Taekwondo people tend to be blank. Those Kung Fu folks tend to be, you know, something. You've probably heard that stuff. Of course, it's going to vary based on personal experience. If someone looking through a resume that's never trained in martial arts sees that you're a black belt, they're going to have one set of ideas in their head. If their kids did martial arts for a few months and they watched some classes, they're going to have a different idea. If they trained as a child or as a teenager and then stopped, they have a different idea. And then, of course, if they actively train, they'll have another idea. Now, I would put martial arts experience on a resume. In fact, I have, especially if you've been training a long time. To say that you've been training for five years or 10 years or you have this rank or you've earned national titles or Hall of Fame inductions, that says something to the person reading it, to the person outside of martial arts. And in almost every case, the person looking that over is going to think good things. People, when they talk about my martial arts training, non-martial artists talk about the fact that I train, that I am a martial artist. They're generally talking about it from a positive perspective. I would say 95 plus percent. People think martial artists are good people. And if nothing else, to show that you've been dedicated to a pursuit for a number of years, as someone who over the years hired dozens of people, it says something. It shows consistency. It shows dedication. And of course, those are qualities that any employer is looking for. If you sit down and you seem angry or frustrated in your interview, and you have the fact that you're a martial artist on your resume, yeah, they, they are going to see you as angry or frustrated. But I would argue that's probably more so from your engagement at the interview than from the resume. And let's face it, if someone doesn't hire you because you're a martial artist, do you really want to work there? I want to be myself in any role that I'm able to take on, whether that's speaking to you on this podcast, whether it's running whistle kick, whether it's any of the other jobs that I've had over the years. I want to be myself. I want to be myself within my martial arts training and outside of my martial arts training. And if I don't have the opportunity to be, if I don't get to tell people, hey, I am a martial artist and this is what I do, I don't want to be around those people. There you have it. What do you think? Do you think differently about this? This is episode 209. You can find the show notes at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. You can leave us a comment there, or you can hit us up on social media at Whistlekick on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, YouTube. I think those are the big ones, right? No MySpace. I keep joking about that lately because MySpace keeps popping up in the news and it, it just, it has me a little bit rattled that it's even still around. If you have a suggestion for one of these Thursday shows, by all means, let us know. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. That'll come right to me. I read every response. Sorry, I read every email and I will send you a response. And then maybe we'll put it on as a Thursday show. That's all for today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.